don't know if it's just me, but over the last year or so, I have seen roughly 5 billion ads for companies trying to push their new AI powered tools. And frankly, I'm becoming more skeptical of the true value of AI by the minute. This video is not about my thoughts on AI. I'll save that for a whole other video because today I wanna to talk about a tool that has restored some of my faith in AI and especially in the companies and people who are using it to build tools. First, I wanna let you know this video is sponsored by MyMind, which is the tool I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. But I think you guys know by now, I only collaborate with companies that I truly would use or already use. And this is a tool that I would wanna make a video about whether or not they offered to pay me. The way that the tool itself is designed is something I really strive for in my own work. The decisions made while designing this tool are so smart and intentional, and I'm really excited to talk about it with you. So. Let's Let's dive in. So first I'm going to show you around my mind a little bit and then I will go into as a product designer why I love it so much and the design decisions that I really admire and what you might be able to take away from this as a designer yourself. So first let me show you around. This is what my mind looks like after I've saved um, quite a few things over the last week. So you can see I'm saving things in all different areas, right? I'm saving like products for my home that I'm inspired by and might want to come back to. I'm of course saving some UI designs from Dribbble, Pinterest, Behance, books that I might want to come back to and read. And the great thing is one, since the UI is so simple and just well designed, all of these things from different sources and, you know, different areas of my life, my different interests, when they come together, they're not super overwhelming. It feels very simple and clean. But the other thing is the main interface of my mind is the search. You're probably not just going to scroll and scroll and find something that you have saved before, right? Especially after I use this for a longer time when I have way, way more, I could be scrolling for hours looking for something that I've saved. The real magic comes with this search. So you can search so many different kinds of things without having to even tag anything. So if I click on this, you can see I have not tagged this with anything. I haven't added any notes. Um, these are just like suggested tags that I could add. It came up with this TLDR for me. I literally just saved this link, which I'll show you how to do in a second. And this is what it came up with. But even still, if I type in cup, it recognized that this was a cup. There's not even the word cup here. You know, it just, it knows that it's a cup. So let's see. I can also do marble. So it knows that this is a marble table. If I do, of course, UI, it's going to filter all of these by all the UI design inspirations I have saved. You can even search for words that appear within one of your saves. So for example, if I remember that one of the projects that I saved recently had to do with a virtual event, I'm gonna type in event and I'm like, oh yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. So it just, it just kind of knows. It's that smart AI in the background that is not too flashy, but it's doing what it needs to do to make the tool work and to make it really easy to use. So before we go any further, I wanna show you how to save things. So let's just say that I have a book that I wanna read. We'll do the design of everyday things, a classic. I'm going to go up to the Chrome extension that I've downloaded for my mind, and I'm just gonna hit the plus button there. It's going to save. See how it's come up as an actual book. So here, this is just kind of a boring screenshot. My mind actually made it look like a book. You can also save quotes, specific quotes from articles. I have done that here from this article um, from Medium. So if I just scroll down and I want to save this quote here, I'm just going to control click and do add to my mind. And then it would show up just like this quote that I saved from that article as sort of just like a highlighted quote. I also wanna show you how you can save something new on the mobile app. So I'll just record my screen here. And let's say I wanna save this video by Matt DiVella to my, my mind. I'm just gonna to go to those three dots, hit share. It's going to bring up this standard iOS share thing. And all I have to do is scroll over to my mind 
and there we go it saved right in my mind and i can go into my app i'll show you what the app looks like on an iphone you can see this video came up as a video so it's very very clear i can click and watch that video not just a screenshot or anything like that now i haven't done this yet but i could see myself using this notes functionality to actually draft some of my videos going forward so i might do that i noticed that they have this little focus mode so it's kind of like a very simple word processor and the cool thing about that is I could tag it you know as one of my videos like the title of my video and then also tag different inspiration images um, that I might want to show during the video so that then you know I could just search it and let me show you what I mean with a project that I'm actually working on so I'm working on a UI project it's a client project and it's an app that has to do with goal setting so I tagged a bunch of things goal app. I'm just going to type that in and hit enter. And so these are all the things I've tagged goal app. And the cool thing is once I have filtered, now I can actually save this to a smart space. So I am going to do that. I'm going to call it goal app. And then I can just pick a color. I'm going to pick this lavender. And there we go. And so now whenever I'm in my everything view, I can just really quickly, instead of typing in that hashtag, it's sort of just a shortcut to take me there. And you can see this is my first space that I created. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is a fun feature called Same Vibe. So it works really well when you have more stuff saved, but I think it'll still work well for this. So. You can see here, one cool thing is that it will pull the hex values out of whatever you save. And so that's kind of cool. You could easily just copy this and use them for a project, which I will definitely be making use of that. But also next to it, you can click this same vibe. So it's basically taking, you know, the vibe of that image or that save, and it's showing me things that are similar. Again, I don't have tons of stuff saved, so this would really come in handy once I have hundreds of things in my mind. Now I want to dive a little deeper and talk about these decisions that were kind of made behind the scenes that make this product what it is and why as a product designer it's so inspiring to me. Number one, you might have noticed there's no social aspect to this tool. So you might compare it to something like Pinterest, but it's different from Pinterest in two main ways. There's no social aspect. You can't follow anyone. You can't see everyone's mind. You know, it's, it's really what you would want it to be as your mind. It's just the things that you want to save, you want to come back to and are inspired by, and you don't get distracted by looking at what other people are doing. There's no comparison. There's also no real manipulation to trying to get you back on the app to see what other people are doing or to try to have like the prettiest mind or whatever it is. It does not matter. It's just for you. The second thing is that there's no discovery. That's the biggest difference I think between my mind and Pinterest is there's no discovery and I actually love that. So it's not a tool that you can go on to to scroll and scroll and scroll and spend tons of time trying to get inspired. It's more something where you're just living your day-to-day -day life, you know, a lot of our day-to-day -day life happens on our laptops and on our phones and we come across things that we want to save. That's what my mind is for. It's just for capturing those things to come back to later. It's not to sit there and get inspired, which I love Pinterest. I will sit on Pinterest for hours and I, I do genuinely love it. But I think this tool is just for a completely different purpose and I like that. I think it's filling a need um, that is not really something that a lot of companies are trying to do because companies make more money when they're keeping people on their app. They're introducing ads. They are trying to get you to share things. They're trying to get you to compare yourself to other people to spend more time on it and all of that stuff I could go on and on. The other thing is, I talked about this a little bit, but the search interface is very, very smart. And by that, I mean, it's very natural to how you as a human being would want to interact with something. For example, instead of having to like filter by a date, by clicking on a date filter, going into a calendar view and choosing a date, I can just type in yesterday or today. And it's gonna show me what I've saved yesterday or what I've saved today, things like that. And I can combine that with different tags. It's that language interaction versus something that's so like binary. Going along with that, I really like the natural visuals 
that my mind brings up. Like I said, with the book example, a book looks like a book, a product looks like a product, you know, a color palette looks like a color palette versus just hex codes. I really like how they described it when I was speaking with the team. They said they want it to feel like a treasure trove versus just like a stack of links and bookmarks. You know, when you look in your bookmark tab on Google, for example, you know, it's, it's fine. It's just a list. This is something that is a lot more visual and again, sort of natural and in line with our brains, you know, sort of innate expectations. I like that they have very friendly sort of terms and conditions, if you will. It just speaks to how the company really cares about its customers and it's not trying to trick you into upgrading or even, you know, force you to upgrade to use the best features. It's just very friendly. There's no ads. There's no tracking of your data or selling of your data. Um, it's very private and sort of safe and secure, but also you can use it completely for free until you run out of, I think it's a hundred cards you can get for free. So it's something that's just very accessible. The last thing, probably my favorite thing and something I wanna talk more about on this channel is how they've used AI. In my mind, AI is in the background where it should be. It's not something that's highly advertised on their homepage. It's not something that is checking a box for a modern, you know, technology company, like we're using AI, all of this stuff. It's quiet, it's in the background and it's just making the product work. What I really don't like is how many companies are using AI just as like almost a buzzword or just as a box to check to make you think that this tool is really advanced and all of this stuff versus focusing on a very specific thing that the AI should be able to do in the background to make the tool work. It's very clear that this company thought of this idea, brainstormed what all the important features should be, and then they crafted an AI or are using an AI, I'm not sure which that already exists, to facilitate that and to allow it to do its job better with the AI that is in the back end versus relying solely on AI for the product itself. You know, like one of those companies where it will write a blog post for you. First of all, it comes out sounding really shitty, this blog post, because it's written by a robot that's just reading a bunch of shitty blog posts that are already online. Anyway, <laughs> I just think it's a really good use of AI and I wanna see more tools doing stuff like this, using it for good. To wrap up, I wanna share something that really stuck with me after chatting with the team about MyMind. It's really interesting. It's this idea that they wanted to design MyMind as like a physical object, something you keep forever that gets better with more time and use. A well-made armchair doesn't beg to be used. It's there when you need it. And it even gets comfier over time as you break it in and potentially more valuable over time as sort of an antique. In an age where apps almost literally beg you with notifications and manipulations to pick them up, use them, and spend more time on them, this alternative approach is both nostalgic and really refreshing. You're in control. The tool works for you, not the other way around. I hope you'll check out my mind. Like I said, it's free for your first 100 cards and I will leave a link to it in the description. But even more so, I hope you get get inspired by this tool to maybe freshen up your perspective for your next design project. The only way to stop the momentum of these big apathetic tech companies and their mindless digital products is to insist on more mindful design from the inside out. Remember, you do have a lot of power as a designer. Let me know what you think about all this. I'd love to continue the conversation in the comments. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.